Hello, Dr. Vicki Peterson here. I wanted to talk to you today about a study that just came out this month uh, from the Public Library of Science. And what it has to do with is testing for celiac disease. So um, there's different parts of your immune system that are more active in certain parts of your body. And if you've been tested for celiac disease or gluten sensitivity, often you see um, it's called IgA and IgG. Those are parts of your immune system and it's a capital I and a little g and a capital A. Uh, so that stands for immunoglobulin A and immunoglobulin G. Uh, don't worry about the big words. The, the real key is that A is found most often sort of in the mucous membranes of the body. And so traditionally, it's, it's the better test, IgA, is a better test uh, when you're looking for uh, celiac disease or gluten sensitivity. and um, frequently that's the test that's done. So a very classic test for celiac is called TTG, <laughs> and so that stands for tissue transglutaminase. That's an enzyme, and it's when you see a high value, it shows that that uh, enzyme is actually creating damage to the lining of your small intestine, and it's a very classic test for celiac disease. So it's kind of all all you need to know, don't worry about all the letters and, and names, um, but here's the, the crux of the matter and here's what the study was about, is that, as I said, the IgA is, the, is a, a good uh, aspect of the immune system to look at. However, and it's a big however, is with celiac disease, uh, going along with that is uh, very, very, very frequently, it's very commonly found, um, is a deficiency of this immunoglobulin A or IgA. So uh, IgA is a very, it's the most common immune deficiency disorder and it's very, very highly represented in patients with celiac disease. So what does this mean? The fact that these go together, what does that mean? If you're deficient, obviously you're low in something. It's, it's your body's not making enough of that immunoglobulin. Um, and what does that translate into? Uh, a weakened immune system, certainly, and the fact that go that goes along with celiac disease makes sense because what gluten does is weaken the immune system. But when it comes to diagnosing, which as you may or may not know, we're not very good at in this country. We only diagnose about three to five percent of the people suffering with celiac disease. So that means over 95 percent of people are continuing to suffer and they're not diagnosed, which of course is terrible. Um, so doctors know that the IgA test is a good test to perform and they perform it. However, they should also, it's what we do here at the clinic, is they should look at the general IgA level. So what I'm trying to say is if you are deficient in this IgA, your test for celiac disease will be inaccurate because you don't produce enough of it to show that you have celiac disease. So um, what does that mean? <laughs> What it means is that a lot of people are being told they don't have celiac disease falsely. So it's a false negative. So they'll look at this uh, TTG test and it'll be negative and it's negative because the person is already deficient in the thing. It's like you're asking, um, you're asking somebody to respond to a question but they're asleep. You know, and you're like, hey, how about this? <laughs> and they're asleep, and then you don't get an answer. You go, oh, okay, I guess the answer is no. Maybe not the best analogy, but that's kind of what you're asking the body. You're saying, okay, IgA, immunoglobulin A, how are you reacting to this enzyme? Is there a problem there? You know, do you have celiac disease? And this IgA level is so low, you're not getting that response. So on the test, you have a low number, so low looks normal except that it's, it's a false normal because of this deficiency that's already there. So it's a very easy thing to avoid. You just simply look for the deficiency as part of the lab test, and if you see this, the person is deficient, you know that that test is not accurate, which is why here we always do IgA and IgG. So you measure both, because if IgA is deficient and you're getting a false negative, the IgG will tell the tale. And that's, that's what was great about this study, is because there really hadn't been a lot of information 
I mean, I just knew I was getting false negatives with the low IgA, which I saw in a lot of patients, so I used my only alternative, the IgG. But what the study was about is it showed, yes, it's a good correlator. So uh, measuring the IgG uh, for that tissue transglutaminase, which is the classic test for celiac, is a good measure. It's, it's good to use that. It will show celiac disease. Um, which is what we found here clinically, but you know, it's always great to have the, the research to, to document. And we do the same thing with um, our gluten sensitive tests. So the moral of the story is if you go back to your lab test, if you're wondering if you have celiac disease or gluten sensitivity, and you look back and you only see that IgA, um, you can get another test. You can find out if you're IgA deficient, which so many celiacs are, it's very, very common, or you can just go back and get the IgG version, and if you're still eating gluten, that is, um, see if it's high. So uh, what, what the researchers said was that a lot of people are being missed, and, and we know we're missing them, but now we have an exact tool that we can use. So if you, if you know of anybody who's been tested and they were pretty sure they didn't do well with gluten, but because the test was negative, they kept eating it, which is a horrible thing for, to happen to s someone that, that they really, they kind of know in their heart of hearts something's not good for them, but because the test is negative, they kind of just go on doing it, um, obviously having a, a terrible compromise uh, on their health. Um, so if you know anybody in that category, tell them about this or show them the video and uh, then they can actually get valid information. So this is really important. Sorry about all the letters and things. <laughs> I don't know any other way to say it. It's just what it's called. So, um, but if you have any questions, as always, uh, write back, let me know. And until next time, I wish you very good health.